Welcome everyone here this morning. Glad you could make it. Um, we want to uh, just encourage you as we think about Bible school, which will be coming in about a month. Um, Mary was going to do a lot of announcing about details about Bible school, but uh, since she's still home recuperating, she's going to do that next week. But I want to encourage you just to think about and pray about um, someone you may invite. Uh, maybe you have children that live close to you, neighbors, um, nieces, nephews, grandchildren, um, people that you could invite to come to Bible school. So we just encourage you to pray about that. And uh, next week, Mary will give you more details. Um, we do not tear down today, so when we're done, why we can all go to the baptism. We don't have to tear down. Um, there's a list on the back table of items that we need for Kentucky, which will be Picking up on July 31st, bring them to church and, and uh, taking care of that on July 31st. So the list is on the back table if you don't have that. Um, oh, by the way, um, when, when my sermon, this is a side note, but uh, Christine, when I uh, do my sermon, you can go back and get uh, Ava. I'll give you a note or I'll give you a nod and say you can go back and get her and bring her in for baptism. So... Um, I'll do that during my sermon. But right now the kids can all join together at the back of the room and with their teacher and they can all head over to Kids Church together. So if the ushers will come forward at this time, we're going to go ahead and, uh, with our offering. Uh, Connie and Mary are still recovering, um, doing, doing okay and recovering well at home. Um, keep in prayer. Um, Becky Hunker is going to have a heart calf on Friday. And so we want to keep her in prayer. Also, we're glad to have um, T. Ray and his wife and Cheryl, the folks. They're the fo raise your hands over there. Okay, those folks over there. We're glad to have them this morning. In case you didn't hear, um, there was a shooting in Finley yes, last evening in a senior apartments. And uh, there was a shooting, and it was uh, just down the hall from them. T. Ray, he heard the shots and opened his door and uh, looked to see what was going on. And they evacuated the building and... Although, so we're glad, we're glad to have them with us this morning. Uh, there's also, we want to keep in prayer. We're not sure there's a house fire in Woodville right now. And so we want to just keep all those folks in prayer. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your provision, for watching over us. We thank you for being with uh, everyone in that apartment uh, building yesterday. And Lord, for watching over all those in, involved in the area, Lord, just uh, pray that you just uh, minister to all those involved. Lord, we pray for all those that are involved in the fire in Woodville right now. Lord, we just pray you'd keep the, all the firemen and all the rescue people safe and just uh, watch over each and every one involved in that. Lord, we pray you'd be with Becky on Friday. Lord, just uh, be with her through this heart cath and, and just uh, guide the doctors and just help them to do all the things they need to do. Lord, just uh, continue to be with her and watch over her through this. Lord, we just thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, we, we pray in the midst of things that go on around us, Lord, that we just remember that you're there with us. So, Lord, we just look to you and we trust you to, to be with us, to watch over us, to take care of us. Lord, we thank you for your provision. We thank you for providing for us. We thank you for the rain that you send. And, Lord, we just ask you to just... Uh, Bless us, and Lord, help us then to remember to give back to you a part of what you bless us with. So, Lord, we just ask you to receive our offering now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A month or so ago, I, I was thinking about a, a lady who grew up in this area, and she's moved away, and, and uh, she's now a professor in the uh, Ashland University in the School of Divinity. And anyway, I was thinking about she came from around here, and I thought, you know, it'd be good to have her come and to share. And uh, so last night we made a connection, and and uh, she's going to come the second week in September, which is a little ways off. But as we were talking and reminiscing, I I I knew of her, uh, her family. She grew around the corner on Wayne Road, so she, she wasn't too far away. But uh, I knew of her family, and our our families had once in a while a connection, not, not a whole lot, but we were talking about people we knew and this and that. And I said, oh, it'll be good you come. She's, I said, well, do you know where our church is? And she says, no, where is it? And I said, well, I said, it's on Girton Road. She says, Girton Road? She says, well, that's around the corner from where I was raised. I said, yeah, it's at the old holiness camp. 
And so she was all excited then, she said, and, and here's what she said. She says, you're not going to believe this. She says, you're an answer to prayer. I said, really? She said, yeah. She says, I've been praying that I'd be able to go back and share with people where I came from. And I thought, wow, isn't that amazing? And I thought, wow, isn't it neat? Everyone's like, you do something right. I, mean, I don't know. You know, like, oh, that was, that was good. That was good. And she was so excited. And, and I was excited. So now I'm really excited for her to come and, and to share her story of uh, growing up in the area. And she can, she can share the rest of that. So um, today I want to talk about faith. I want to talk about different kinds of faith. Where is your faith? And I'm going to start from the bottom up, I guess. I, that's my, my, my phrase. I'm going to start with the worst case scenario, and we're going to go to what I hope is where we all should be heading. And we're going to start in James, the second chapter, the 17th verse. James, the second chapter, the 17th verse says, Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. And I'm going to start with dead faith. And that's not where we want to be. But there is something called faith that is dead. And it says that if we have faith, and it's just by itself, and it doesn't have corresponding works, that it's really just dead. If you have faith, somehow you're going to show that you have faith. It's going to produce works in you. It's going to produce something in you. You're going to respond to the faith that's in you. You're going to live according to that faith. You're going to live as though you have faith inside of you. You're going to talk as though you have faith inside of you. Your talk will be different. You'll put your trust in God. And not just as like, oh yeah, I trust God, but you're going to trust him each and every day. You're going to trust him for today. You know, the Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. We trust him for today's needs you know it's not just like well i'll trust god for everything oh yeah i trust god no you're going to trust him for today's needs you're going to trust god to take care of you today it's going to be a reality there's going to be something in your life that shows you have faith that you know this is where i put my trust if you don't live your life as though you have faith then it says you don't have faith you know, if, if you never actually put your faith to work, if you don't ever actually trust God for something, if you don't ever express your faith, then you have no faith. It's dead. It's dead. You can say you have faith. You know, you can say it all you want. But faith without works, faith without showing that it's real, is dead faith. And so our life should always reflect the faith we have we should learn to trust god i always say children growing up in a in a christian home at some point in time they have to learn to trust god for their needs they have to learn to put their faith into active into active uh, ways of seeking god they have to start to trust god they have to trust him because until then it's not faith it could be somebody else's faith. You know, well, when something happens, mom always takes care of it, or dad always takes care of it, or, you know, it's just always, I don't have to worry about it. Well, at some point in time, it has to become your faith. It has to become yours. It has to become real. It has to have works. It has to be active in your life. Otherwise, it's dead faith. And then we see a story in, in the New Testament in Matthew Matthew, the 8th chapter, the 26th verse. Um, Jesus and his disciples are out in a boat. And Jesus is in the boat. He's asleep. And a big storm comes up. And it says it was a big storm, so big that the waves were splashing over the boat. So, you know, it's not like, okay, it's a little storm. But, you know, this is a big deal. The waves are coming in over the boat. And Jesus is in the boat asleep. Asleep. And so in Matthew 8, 26, when they said, the disciples, they said, Lord, help us, help us. We're all dying. We're going to die. We're going to die. And Jesus said to them, why are you fearful, O you of little faith? 
Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So Jesus says they had little faith. Little faith. Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Why do we get afraid? Why do we get afraid? You know? I'm not saying we don't get afraid, but when we get afraid, what do we do with it? What do we do with it? You know, do we start to cry? Oh, no, we're not going to make it. We're all doomed. Or do we say, you know, I believe the Lord's going to take care of us. And Jesus says, you have little faith. Little faith because they were fearful. You know, I always say that fear is the opposite of faith. <clears throat> you know, fear is, is the opposite of faith. Fear is when I'm afraid. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm scared. I have no hope. We're all doomed. That's the opposite of saying, you know, God's going to take care of us. Amen. God's going to take care of us. And so he says to his disciples, oh, you of little faith. They had, they, he didn't say they didn't have any faith. He just said they didn't have much. They didn't have much. It seemed to be, it seemed to be a reprimand of just having a little faith. It's ironic in the Bible. It talks about, and somebody may have already thought, well, yeah, but the Bible says that if you just have the faith of a mustard seed, you can do anything. Well, that is true. That is true. The Bible does say if you just have the faith of a mustard seed. But it's saying that that little faith of mustard seed can grow. And your attitude towards faith is that I, I just have faith in God and that's all I need because God's going to take care of it. The disciples were afraid. They were afraid. And he said, oh, you of little faith. Oh, you of little faith. So I believe we can have faith and it's meant to grow. I believe our faith is not meant to stay little. You know, our faith is, faith is meant to grow. Our trusting God needs to grow. How does faith grow? Well, you have to go through situations. You know, how, how do you, if you're going to build your muscles up, how do you build muscles up? Well, you need resistance. You know, if you don't get resistance to push against your muscles, your muscles aren't going to grow. You know, when I believe it's the same way with faith. Faith grows when we reach, when we have resistance comes against us, that we exercise our faith and it grows. It grows. And then the next time we remember, well, you know, God was faithful. God was faithful. And so faith grows. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As we hear God's word, as we apply it to our lives, our faith grows. As we get in situations where we can't or we don't know what to do, we hit a spot of resistance that our faith then grows. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Franklin Graham said, if you can figure it out on your own, it's not faith. Well, think about it. Think about it. You know, how many things do you run into? And, well, I can figure this out. I can figure this out. And I think we figure out a lot of stuff. I think we figure out a lot. But what do you do when you get up that thing? Oh, I can't figure this out. All of a sudden, I can't figure it out. Now, what do I need? I need faith. I need faith because I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And that causes it to grow so that we go from little faith to more faith and our faith grows. The Bible says that faith is a mustard seed. eventually becomes a, a big plant. And birds can even rest in it. You know, so it's meant to grow. Faith is meant to grow. Another, another uh, comparison of faith is in Mark the 10th chapter. Mark the 10th chapter, the 13th, starting at the 13th verse. They brought little children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. Childlike faith. Childlike faith. You know, you can say, well, it's small. I don't know if it's small or not. I'm not sure small is the right way to define childlike faith. 
Childlike faith is the simple trusting faith. The one that doesn't raise a lot of questions. It's interesting. You tell a child to trust Jesus and they'll go, okay. If I tell an adult to trust Jesus, they'll go, yeah, but what about? Adults always got questions. We always got an answer for everything. We always look at life experiences and we'll say, well, yeah, but. I mean, we, we have all this to deal with. All these things that we, we think we know and we got to run through our minds. You know, a lot of times the battle's in our minds. And I'm, I think the next couple of weeks I might do a little uh, series on uh, our mind. Our mind and the strength of your mind. But you know, children, it's just childlike faith. Yeah, but they don't know what they're doing. Isn't that what we always say? Yeah, but they don't really know. It's interesting today, we're going we're gonna to have a, a baptism. We're going to do somebody well over... Somebody that's up there a little bit. <laughs> we won't we won't say, you know. Still a young person, but you know. And we're gonna do a how old's Ava? Five. We're gonna do a five year old. Five? What does she know? Well, if you ask her, she'll tell you that Jesus loves her and she loves him. Now, she's not gonna write you a ten page theory on what that means. She's just going to say, this is what I believe. Childlike. Is that, is that a bad thing? You know? Is that, well, yeah, but she really, you know, she really doesn't know what she's doing. I see a lot of adults that don't know what they're doing. I'll just tell you. I, t I see a lot of adults that don't know what they're doing. You know? Now, does her faith need to grow? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is not an inoculation. This is not a vaccination. A one-shot deal. She's good for the rest of her life. It's the beginning of a process. It's the beginning of a process. But it's childlike faith. It's childlike faith. In Romans, Romans the fifth chapter. Romans the fifth chapter, the first two verses. It says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by faith into this grace, grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We are justified. We're made right with God. We're justified by faith. By faith. Childlike faith. Simple faith. But it's faith. It's faith. Faith in him, not me. You know, faith is in him, not me. It says, we have peace with God. We have access by faith into this grace. Faith gives us access to this grace of God. You know, God, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son freely. Freely. He, he said he loved the world. He loved the world that he gave his son. That's grace. The world didn't do anything to deserve that. You don't do anything to deserve God's grace. It's by faith, by trusting what he did. You know, it's not what you do. That's why it's not, it doesn't matter how good you are. You know, it doesn't matter how bad you are. That's the good news. It's not based on how good you are. It's not based on how bad you are. God so loved the world. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Not when we got good enough. Not when we deserved it. We don't get what we deserve, thank goodness. But Christ died for us. So by faith, we have access to this grace that God has given us. It's saving faith. It's based upon my acceptance of what he did for me. And that's where I put my faith. Not in anything else. I don't put it in my ability. I don't put it in uh, what somebody else says. But I put it in what he did for me. And I accept that. I accept that. You know, you know what the problem is? It's too simple. It's too simple. We want to make it hard. 
We want to we want to make it hard. That's why we need childlike faith to just accept that. Then once we have faith, I believe, you know, faith is supposed to grow. In the Bible, there was a time when Jesus talked about great faith. In Matthew, the 8th chapter. Matthew, the 8th chapter, beginning at the 5th verse. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go and he goes, and to another come and he comes, and to my servant do this and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. I have not found such great faith. The man said, you know, you don't have to come. Lord, just speak. Just speak the word. He had faith. He had faith that if Jesus just spoke the word, his servant would be healed. You know, sometimes it's, it's hard. Sometimes it's hard. Life experiences work against us sometimes. You know? All the things, all the things we see around us that didn't go the way we thought. All the things we have to deal with and say, why did that happen? Why did that happen? And it takes us away from just childlike faith. And childlike faith says, Lord, I believe who you are. This man says, I know who you are. You have authority. You have authority. And he still has authority. He still has authority. He has authority. He has authority in our lives. You know, and the, the man said, just speak the word. Just speak the word. You know, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's easy sometimes. I'm not saying it's not difficult sometimes. But I'm saying that there is such a thing as great faith. And I believe great faith goes beyond what we see. I believe great faith goes beyond what's circumstantial around us. That great faith is trusting God in the midst of. I believe one of the things that's, that's uh, sometimes and not always, but sometimes it's real neat when God gives us a gift of faith. In 1 Corinthians 12, 9. 1 Corinthians 12, 9, it talks about the gifts of the Spirit. And it says, to another faith by the same Spirit. You know, when it comes to faith, sometimes God will give you a gift of faith. Now, gifts are great because you didn't do nothing to deserve it. You, you, don't, you don't deserve it. You know, you don't do anything. God just gives you faith for something. You're, you can't even explain why you have faith. I don't know. I'm just at peace. You know, I just, I'm just trusting God and I know God's going to take care of it. He'll give us a gift of faith sometimes. I don't think we can live on gifts of faith. I think they're gifts given to us. I don't think it's an ongoing diet. I believe we need to exercise our faith, grow in faith. I think that's all part of it too. But sometimes God gives us a gift of faith. Sometimes also there's a fruit of faith, you know, that when we become a Christian, that faith grows and it, it becomes a fruit. It's something that's produced in us. You know, it's a fruit. It's if we have, if we have a desire to obey God and be obedient to him in, in Galatians 5, 22, it says the, group, the, group, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. It should grow. It should grow. We should be able to look at our lives and say, you know what? I can see my faith has grown. I trust God more today than I did a year ago. You know, we should see it grow because it's a fruit. It should be produced. 
as Christians, we should produce godly fruit. If we're not producing fruit that's godly, then we ought to look at what's the source of the tree. Where's it getting its nutrients? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If you want faith, you're going to get it by hearing the word of God. If you want unbelief, then listen to everybody around you and listen to the news. You know, they're going to tell you all the worst things in the world. Because I don't know if that's what we seem to like, but that's what we get. And I think they give us what we want, so I don't know, part of it is I think we like bad news. And you say, oh no. I want to tell you something. People's, People's eyes light up sometimes more with bad news than good news. Just something to think about. Something to think about, you know. We, 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 need to, we need to start living our life with a life of faith and, and positive instead of thinking, oh no, oh no, we're all doomed. You know, we have faith and it should grow. It should grow. I'm going to close with two examples. Um, the first one, the first example is an example of Abraham. And, uh, oh, excuse me, I want to share a scripture first. Um, in Romans 4, it's about Abraham. Romans 4, beginning at verse 13. It says, For the promise that he would be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed, through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So when God told Abraham he was going to be the father of many nations, it came through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of no effect. In other words, faith is not come through the law. It's not based on what we do or don't do. You know, basically the law is only going to tell you how you failed. The promise came through faith because the law brings about wrath for where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also are those who are of faith of Abraham or of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. It is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed God gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. God calls those things that don't exist as though they did. That's what faith does. Think about it. What does faith do? Faith calls things that don't exist as though they exist. Faith says, I trust God, even though it don't look like this is going to work out. Faith says, it's going to be okay. Faith says, God is my healer, and I feel like dirt. I don't feel, you know, I, I feel terrible. So what do I want to do? I want to tell everybody how terrible I feel. Please have sympathy. Please feel bad for me, because I feel terrible. And most everybody will go, oh, I know how you feel. And then they'll tell you how they felt. And I'm going to tell you something. It's always worse than you. Yeah, I had that too. I almost died. I, I, that amazes me. You know, when, when there's something, I, yeah, I, I don't even want to tell nobody what's going on in me because they always got something worse and I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Isn't that the, I don't know. That's how we're wired. It's somehow how we're wired. And I think we need to start, it says we need, can call things that don't exist as though they do. That's faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of what I cannot see. Sounds like the dumbest thing in the world if you want to use your rational thinking. By faith. By faith. So by faith, this is what I believe. By faith. By faith in God. This is what I believe. It's not, now, it's not saying that the reality is not there. I'm not saying, well, I'll just pretend it's not there. Well, you can try that. 
But you know, that doesn't always work. It's still there. You know? But I believe we need to begin to see that, you know, faith is trusting God even when it don't look like things are going well. Like, whoa, this looks bad. You can go get Ava. <laughs> um, my last one, my last one I want to look at, and I, I think this is one of the greatest examples of faith that I know of. It's in Daniel, the third chapter. We've been doing a lot of Daniel studying. <clears throat> Daniel, the third chapter, and it the, starts at the 16th verse. There was, there was uh, some people who were supposed to bow down to an idol. Okay, the king decided he's going to make an idol. They're all supposed to bow down. When they, when, they hear the, when they hear the music and all kinds of stuff, everybody falls down and worships the idol. Okay, so there's these three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They, they didn't do it. They disobeyed. They didn't, they didn't fall down and worship like everybody else. So somebody ratted on them, and the king found out. Okay, and he you know, found out that they didn't do this. And so they decided that they was going to throw him in the middle of a fiery furnace. And in verse 16, it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. You know, he wanted to know why they wouldn't bow down. They basically said, eh, don't worry about it. We're not going to tell you. And it says, if that is the case, you know, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. So they said, eh, you know, throw us in the furnace. Our God, he will deliver us. They, they had faith. They had faith. They, they said, well, God will take care of us. Wow. That's really, you know, that, I don't, that's, is that the ultimate? It could be close. It could be close to the ultimate faith, you know. If you don't, if you don't do this, we're going to lop your head off. You know, if you don't do this, this is going to happen. They said, oh, okay, okay. But here's what I thought was great faith. Verse 18. But they said, but if not, if God doesn't deliver us. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. We all know the story. They got delivered. Hey, hey, hey. That's, that's good news, okay? That's, that's great. It is great. And that's what I want to rest on. But you know, the rest of their statement was this. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we're still not going to serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold, gold, ima gold image which you have set up. They said, you know, either way. If God delivers us, so be it. And he said, then they said, but if he doesn't deliver us, we're going to burn. Hmm. I thought faith always meant I get out of the situation. <laughs> I, thought, I thought the reason you have faith is so you avoid all those things. These guys said, God's going to deliver me, but if he doesn't, that's okay. Think about it. Think about it. They had faith either way. They had faith either way. They had, they had faith if God delivered them. They had faith if God didn't deliver them. The question for you and me is, is my faith always dependent upon God doing what I want? I'll have faith if God does what I want him to do. I'll have faith if God takes care of this and does that and makes my life happy and, and comfortable. Isn't that, what we, isn't that why we pray? Don't we pray for our life to be happy and comfortable? Isn't that why we have faith? If it is, it's very dangerous. The reality is, I don't know what the numbers, I'm not, I, I think, and I don't hold me to this, but Maybe 185,000 people die every year as martyrs for Christianity. 185,000. Wow. Well, well, the problem was they didn't have faith. No. They had faith. 
That's why they died. Amen. Yes. And so sometimes, sometimes I think we've got to realize that, you know, faith is trusting God no matter what. Amen. Irregardless of my circumstances, irregardless of what I see. Irregardless of the outcome. I have faith and trust him. So as we think about faith and, and what it means, you know, it's a process. It's a process. I think we're all in the process. I think sometimes Christians don't do very good at encouraging one another in the process. I think we tend to be critical. I think we tend to be critical sometimes. I think we tend to put people down because we don't think they have enough faith. Or if I have an area where I have a lot of faith and you don't, then obviously we're going to talk about where I have a lot of faith and what's wrong with you. You know, some of us have faith in certain areas, you know. But I believe, first and foremost, we need to encourage one another. Encourage one another to grow in faith. To grow in faith. I doubt if we've any achieved ultimate arrival to where we have all the faith we need. You know, to some extent, yes, but, you know, it can always grow. It can always grow. It can always grow. And I believe there will always be things that come where we have to exercise our faith. There's always something happening. Always, always stuff where we get opportunity to exercise our faith and trust God. So today, we're going to have a baptism. I don't hear any thunder. So I hope that means there's no lightning. That's the only thing that will stop the baptism. If it starts lightning, I'm not getting in the pond. Where's my faith? It's on shore. So, <laughs> Plus, i got to take people with me, so I don't know anyway. <laughs> but anyway, so that's, that's the deal, and it looks like we're okay. Um, so today, um, Patty is, Roberts is going to come, and uh, she's going to get baptized, and, and Patty... Patty said this to me. She said, uh, she says, I just don't remember being baptized and I want to I wanna do it. You know, you know, it's simple. I don't, I don't remember and I want to be baptized. Ava, she wants to be baptized and her thing was, is he going to ask me any hard questions? <laughs> so I'm committed today to childlike questions. Oh, what a novel thought. What a novel thought. Childlike questions. Because usually, you know, we make them real hard. Well, you know, we're going to stand up, we're going to scrutinize you, and we're going to give you hard questions. And, you know, you know well, we're not today because they got to be easy, which is good, which is good. So if uh, Patty and uh, Ava come up, we're going to ask them a couple questions. And the reason, the reason is, is just because I believe the Bible says we need to confess what we believe, you know, and so we confess, and that's what we do. We can step right up here, Ava. There you go. Very good, right there. And so we confess. We, we say what we believe. And I believe it's important to say it in front of people. You know? Every once in a while, somebody will say, well, you know, I really don't want to, you know, I'll get baptized, but I really don't want to do it in front of people. Well, that's kind of the point. You know, it's a public confession. So it's a public confession of faith. So we're going to ask two questions. Two questions, okay? They're pretty easy. I think you can do this, okay? Okay, the first question is, do you believe that God loved you and sent his son Jesus to die on a cross and rise again so that your sins are forgiven and you have eternal life? Do you believe that? What, what's this mean? Can, yes, okay, I thought, yeah, you got You say yes. Hey, Patty, do you say yes too? Yes. Okay, and one more question. You know, once we accept Jesus and we get baptized, the important, maybe the most important, I don't know if it's the most important thing, is we keep following him. You know, this is a start. It's not the finish. You know, and I, I th it's so important, so important. And maybe, you know, especially, not especially, but for both of you, it's, it's important to continue. But sometimes when you're little, you know, it's really important to keep following Jesus. And so my question is, do you promise to keep following Jesus and to serve him the rest of your life? If so, say, I will. I will? Okay, very good. All right. Okay, let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we just thank you for Patty and Ava. Lord, I just pray you just bless them. Lord, I pray you just watch over them. And Lord, as they've made this confession of faith, Lord, I pray you just encourage them. Lord, just help them to grow and to stay close to you. Help them to walk faithful with you. Lord, we just thank you for your presence with them. And Lord, just be with us now as we go and, and we baptize them. We just thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.